guys. Well, I'm mixing up a solution here because the store-bought rust remover is costing me a fortune. And I've got a little project here I want to take care of. When we were out um, cleaning out my father-in-law's estate after he passed, we found what I believe to be a vintage surface plate. Now, I really don't know if it is or not. I understand my wife's grandfather or great-grandfather um, was a machinist at one time, so this might have been his surface plate. Anyhow, the thing is about 100 pounds. Um, I'm not going to put it on the edge of this because I don't want to have a disaster right now. So what I've done is I've wire brushed it a little bit. I want to hit it with a little bit of paper so I can put a clamp on it. Now, you know, even if this is not a surface plate, I think we can make one out of it. I've got a grinder. My grinder's been leveled, so... Okay. Man, I'm getting tired of lifting heavy stuff in here. Wow. There we go. There. Now it's all under the water. So it's been brushed down with a wire brush after I scraped it. A little bit of sandpaper, now I've got a vice grip on it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go and get myself a couple anode, steel anodes over there and I'm going to put them in the side of the tank and we'll go ahead and hook up some current and turn on the charger. Now, and here's the steel plates I want to use. Make sure the plates do not touch the piece that you're trying to de-rust. Uh, these are clean new metal panels so I didn't have to really scratch them up or anything. And I'm going to put the this one right here. Well, I might not need the extension. right here. Oh. Oops. Oh, the wire came out of this darn thing. So Just want to make give it a couple contacts points of contact on the electrode there Just pin these back okay ah. there we go there okay Go ahead and turn the charger on, and we got her on six volts. And we're right at four amps. And we're right at four amps. This is pretty cool. This, I've never done this before. This is new to me. 
So, I mean, this goes to show anybody can do anything if they do enough research on it. How well you do it, I guess, depends on how many times you do it and how you refine whatever process you're working for. But let me bring you down here and show you this already. There, you can see it down inside there. And it's bubbling away. A little bit more so on one side over here, but... We're going to let this go for a couple days. I watched Mr. Pete and Chop Dog Sam and... They just ended up leaving it in for days. And it's not going to hurt the parent metal. It's just going to take the rust off. So we're going to come back a little bit later on this evening and see where we're at. After I finish de-rusting this surface plate here, I'll scrape it up as good as I can and see what I've got. But then we're going to take it over here onto the surface grinder. But... still sitting here. It's been about four or five days now since I came out with my video letting you guys know to put a comment in the comment section. Count me in. Subscribe. You have to be subscribed to my channel. Send me a comment. Give me a thumbs up and say count me in Ron or I'm in Ron or whatever you'd like to say. And if I pull your name you'll be the proud winner of this puke tank. It'd look great on your 4x4, hot rod, old school hot rod, rat rod, tractor. They look pretty good. I've made a whole bunch of them. I've got them all over the U.S. But, just wanted to give you guys a quick update on a project that I've going here. Not that I, I still can't talk. A project I have going here in the shop. So, so just to give you a comparison, here's a quart tank. Well, I can't put this in so it sits all the way down, but these are both quart tanks. This is the one I've got in my coop right here. It's got a hose on it, though. Cool little handle, and I put a gauge on it. Got a little skull and crossbones there, but they're both quart tanks. They'll both mount the same. This one has an original mount on it. So, just to see what it looks like in a little uh, 29 Ford. And somebody was asking me about how I hook my radiator to my I mean my cooling fan to my radiator and I'll show you so if you can see right in there right here there's one of these round stoppers on the outside with a straight round zip tie that runs through it and I stick that between the fins and the coils on the radiator and it has a spring on the back that holds a specific amount of tension and I just have it held on with that right or wrong I mean it's been on there for three years I've never had a problem except I sprouted a small leak in the radiator lately and I've got to uh, got Evans in there so I've got to make sure I reclaim all of that because I'm reusing it I've never had a boil over in this never had an overheating problem since I've had Evans in it so good stuff anyway I thought it's let you see what a tank looks well here let's look on one on this side so if I have this one on this side, now you're going to have to bend this to fit around whatever you need to fit around, like on your frame rail, your cross member or something. I'm not going to bend it right now, but so you can kind of see how that looks going in there. That looks pretty cool. I get a lot of questions about these tanks, but there you go. Well, I couldn't resist. I was going to lock up the shop before I went to bed and here's what it looks like in there. It's been in there for a few hours so we'll check it in the morning. And I'll clean off the plates there and see if we need to give it a scrub or what's going on. See you in the morning guys. There it is. Well, guys, it's the next morning. 
I came out here real early and uh, took the scale off of the uh, plates and kind of swished the water around a little bit because it was pretty foamy and rusty. But I'm going to take the charger off it and we're going to see what we've got. It's been there overnight, let's say 12 hours or so, 12, 14 hours. I can still see bubbles coming off of it. So what I'm going to do, if I can, without hurting myself here because it's really heavy, um, I want to just kind of flip it over because it's on two bricks on the bottom. <clears throat> and I want to expose that area too. Either that or I'll stand it up or something. So let's turn this thing off. Oh, wrong one. Yeah, it's still got more since this morning when I scraped it off. Got to let all the black on there. There we go. Now we'll give it a little bit better conductivity. Oh, this one here too. And that's all the stuff that's coming off of the piece of cast iron I got in there. Now, you know, I felt this thing earlier. And it's got quite a bit of pits in it, so it's very possible that it wasn't a surface plate unless that much of it's been eaten away, but uh, I doubt it. Yeah, it's heavy. <laughs> okay, well, let me put it down and I'll get you over here and we'll scrape off just a little bit of it. So, let's see what we got. I'm going to leave this here so I don't have to uh, get my fingers caught getting up in there. time I've done anything like this. That looks really nice. I'm going to look at the other side. is off it. So, instead of putting this back in here, I thought I might have to. It's pretty doggone clean, but one thing I just noticed on it was this side is real smooth and it's got an inset in it. It's Probably about five inches a five inches in square here, but the rest of it's pretty smooth. And the other side is just really, really pitted. So I think I might use the smooth side, depending, to um, set it up on the surface plate. I mean, on the um, surface plate wrong to set it up on the surface grinder I'll bring you back next episode on this 
we'll get it up on the surface grinder and we'll see if we can map it out and get one side of it relatively flat. So, I don't know how the spitball kid's going to do this, but hey, that would have been a good um, title for my channel. Spitball kid. Yeah. I'm not ashamed to admit it. I mean, I'm learning. I'm trying, well, I'm trying to learn <laughs> in my older age here. But mainly I'm just out here having fun. Um, but, you know guys, this is something you could do at home. I had all the wire laying around. I had the charger. I had a piece of metal that I cut into some anodes, some sacrificial anodes. And it seems like it's doing really well. I might want to put a piece all the way around this. I don't know if it would make it any better, but less than 24 hours here, this thing looks really good. Well, I won't be needing to pick these things up much anymore either. I'm going to show you something else that I had kind of a project going on and I got halfway done with it and that's when I lost all the videos. Yeah, I know, I'm beating a dead horse again. Okay, I'll show you what I got. There we go. It's my shop hoist that I made out of some channel that was originally a um, conveyor that had the rollers on it, the metal rollers. So, and what I did, I'm just playing with that. We're getting the house painted in a couple days here, so I had to go around and take everything off of the eaves on the inside and everything I had hanging out here. So. If it seems like a mess, or stuff's hanging where it shouldn't be, that's probably why. But I got this, I ordered this off of eBay, and it was Harbor Freight Orange, even though it wasn't Harbor Freight. So I had to paint it blue, and the blue just happened to match. The Chrysler blue almost matches that, so. It's going to be really nice. It's going to go through the wall of my shop here, and that'll probably be on an upcoming video real soon, because I'm going to need it. But anyway... That's what I got going here, and I've got them attached up here. Okay. So I've got them attached up here, and that's about where we got. And we're going to go, I'm going to take my heater down, and we're going to go right through that back wall, out to the end of the overhang, so I can pick something up out of the back of my truck, and get it up back in here without kicking myself in the uh, hernia area again so but for right now that's all on the surface plate i'll see you guys next time try to be safe in the shop don't be like me okay have a good day the image quality is a little bit better on this one. Here's the error that I'm getting here. You see this over here on the right? This little question mark? Everything looks fine until I go to put the cursor on it. Then it says it's unknown. And I'm not going to click on them because that will ruin up the one that I'm working on down below. I just don't get it. So... Yep, I just don't get it. This is what's happened to all my little video clips. And if I click on one, it's going to jack up everything that I have in here. So, just thought I'd give you a little shot of what I got to work with.